Thanks, Michael. Thank you, Jeremy. Yeah, the, the second match of the day on table one is a winner's qualification contest. This isn't any laughing matter, unlike the previous one we saw on table two, where we had a jokester. This is deadly serious stuff. Two world-class players going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Jeffrey De Luna against Jason Shaw. Now, I know, Carl, you over on table two, the Vietnamese player we just saw there, he was, <coughs> some would say, a bit of a character. Yeah, we well, sat front row for about 10 minutes. He's a funny, funny guy, the way he plays. So the pool fans love a character and just the way he was playing and dancing about. Unfortunately, he's out of the tournament though, which is a real shame. Snooker had a player like him. Thailand's Dechuan Poonjang. Does he still play on the circuit? For well, he's got his card, but he doesn't play now. I don't think he comes over. But he's a, a good player. He's at a 147. He beat Stephen Maguire at the Crucible one year. Took it to the last 16. But he was full of fun also. And the other parallel I was drawing was Ho Sung Choi. Now, you might not easily recall the name, but you'll know what I'm talking about when I say was the South Korean golfer with the very funky swing who played on the PGA Tour a couple of times. He had crowds laughing when they were watching him. It's something different, let's put it that way, but now, of course, that line of entertainment is over. for these two. Well, Jeff DeLuna has played quite a lot of pool so far to get here. Just a couple of matches, but he's not had an easy time of it. Won 9-5 against a fellow Filipino, John Rebong, in his first match, and then 9-8 in his second here on table one yesterday against Do Taken of South Korea. Uh, South Korea. <laughs> Vietnam. Well, he's won the first rack of this one. And I think with him, Carl, a lot depends on the efficiency of his break. Yeah, such a talented player. Possesses an awful lot of cue power. Maybe from time to time that may let him down because he just backs himself to play these crazy shots. So sometimes shot selection might not be 100% there, but boy, is he a dangerous player. Shaw's got work to do here as he loses the opening rack. Yep, Jeff DeLuna showed an awful lot of heart yesterday in that match against Dote Kien. It was one of those games where the balls didn't cooperate with either player. Lots of scrappy tactical racks. Not really to DeLuna's liking, he was 4-1 down. He did not lead until 8-7, and in the end, he just about scrambled through at Hill Hill. Let's have a look at this break you were just talking about then, Phil. Let's see what the Luna's got in the locker. Well, it's not bad. He made the one ball. And I think he will benefit from the fact he's had experience of playing on table one already. Whereas Jason Shaw's only played one match in the tournament, he had a walkover in the first round and then he beat Fu Chi Wei 9-4. That's a good win that, Fu Chi Wei, one of the top Chinese Taipei players, very dangerous operator. Fu Chi Wei got to the quarter-finals last week at the Perry Nine Ball Open. is a little awkward ideally he'd want distance but I don't know if he can get distance I don't know if he's just going to chip off this let's see what the loon is up to here it's very tight see if he plays off the left side as we look I feel like you're chipping the two near the pocket unless he plays it very thin and tries to get up by the purple five I 
decided just to go for distance. I think one thing we can say early on is that when these two play at their peak, they can be sensational. When Jason Shaw is flowing, there's no finer player to watch. But by his standards, he's not been consistently flowing in 2023, Carl. No, he had a very good run at the US Open. That's been his best performance so far, other than winning the, the Scottish Open, which is obviously a ranking event, but we're talking about the the big, big majors on the circuit. The thing is with Shaw, he sets such high standards, he set the bar so high that even if he has a a reasonable season, which involves winning a tournament or two, you expect more. And you certainly expect more than that. Hanging the three. That's a miss that literally for Jeffrey De Luna is a head scratcher. One thing I can pretty much guarantee, Phil, is shot clock won't be an issue in this match. As a commentator, you don't support anyone because you need to be completely neutral. One thing I will say is that when Shaw is playing at his best, who could possibly deny that he he isn't a joy to behold. He's wonderful, wonderful entertainment. And he makes the game look preposterously easy, which is always the calling card of a sporting genius. What do you mean? Oh, oh but there he misses the a seven. Yeah. That's the kind of ball he's been missing all year, out of the blue, or in this case, out of the brown. That is incredible. Let's have a look at this one. Yeah, just fired it into that near jar at pace. Very unusual from Shaw. He did get away with this one. I know Deluna's got the safety, which is not good. It's three feet short, the back rail. I was just about to say before Shaw missed that, what do you mean? We need to be neutral in the com box. Well, I know you're not, not, not neutral <laughs> at the Moscone Cup. We know that. No, I know what you And mean. we know that Jeremy Jones isn't neutral either because obviously he wants the Americans to do well because he's the captain of the... US Moscone Cup team, he would like to see all of his lads do well individually to bolster their confidence collectively. But myself and Michael, we're supposed to be straight down the line. But you do, human nature, you do tend to gravitate in terms of entertainment value towards certain players. And there's no doubt that Jason Shaw is near the top of the list when it comes to making the game look a very simple proposition when he's playing well. Yeah, that was a nice kick save. Good pace as well. shouldn't be going on. I can't believe Shaw missed the seven. Mind you, I couldn't believe that Deluna missed the three. It's actually okay because the bank shot's not on.
didn't play the pot. Even though you might have thought it was very close to the side, but he was playing it just before the middle. De Luna may just bank this back up table, knowing that the nine ball may come into play, may hook Jay back. Might be tempted at the bank shot as well. Bank shot into the pocket where the eight ball is, that pocket there. Shot. Well, he's gone full bugged for this. He's going to leave this over the pocket. And this was the pocket where all the trouble started for sure, originally in this rack. Kept the positional shot quite straightforward. The first seven ball should have been a sure thing. It wasn't, it rattled, but he got away with it, as Carl said at the time. And then when he got a second chance, Shaw did not err. And so Eagle Eye is off the mark, off the ground. It's 1-1. One, one. Now, winner's qualification well underway. I can tell you Billy Thorpe has made a really good start against Anton Raga. Billy the banker has banked three racks, he leads 3-0. David Alcady, 3-2 up on win. Antoine, one of the finest players from right here in Vietnam. Michael Feliciano, finalist in the Perry Open on Monday night. He's 1-0 up on Trin Van Bin. World champion of the past, Torsten Homan and Andre Ionescu, one each. Same score, James Aranas against no Quang Trung who of course caused the biggest upset of the tournament so far by knocking Carlo Biardo to the one loss side. Also in action, Fedor Gorscht. He's 1-1 with Masato Yoshioka. At the end of this rack, I'll give you some of the selected scores from losers round two. Made the one. Looked a hair soft, the break. Usually the break's a little bit hard. Just got a shot at the toe. Got to get into this ball or look where the red three is. That's more like it from Shaw. Very clean pot. Don't know about you, Carl, but I think it's warmer in here today than any day of the tournament so far. And with Shaw, because he plays to such a high standard, if he falls below that standard, he does tend to become frustrated. So it's a case of keeping his cool physically and mentally. Should be a simple run out here. Yeah, the opening two shots, very nicely done. That miss on the seven ball will sometimes can be a good thing. Just means you bear down that little bit longer on the shot. Sometimes you can, you can start to take pots for granted.
That was a top class rack from a top class player, Jason Shaw, leading by two to one. Now, those selected scores I was telling you about on the one last side. Well, Sharik Saeed of Singapore is on the hill against Nizam Udin of Bangladesh at 7 3. Francesco Candela, who's had a really solid year, the Italian 6 4 upon win, Duck Tang. John Rebong from the Philippines has just completed an 8 3 win over Win Van Tang. Kengo Suzuki of Japan, also a winner this morning. Ralph Suke just starting out on table six. The six times World Masters champion, actually. And he's 2 0 upon the USA's Michael Yednak. The guys on the one loss side are going to have a very busy day, aren't they? If you're involved in round two, you've got to play three matches to book your place here tomorrow in the last 64. If you win this one, though, winner's qualification, that's you for the day. You can go and relax and think about being involved in single elimination. And, of course, cashing prize money. Does have a shot at this two, obviously. Three ball goes in the bottom right. Just depends which way you can go with the cue ball here. Because of the six ball reel. Yeah, I wonder if he can draw it off the side rail just below the six. Or can he spin it two rails? If he goes two rails, it will go close to the corner pocket. Yeah, 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 I like it. Just missed the six ball. If I was Jason Shaw's sports psychologist, I would tell him that this is the Turning Stone Classic. He loves that event. I think he's won it nine times in New York State. And it's a very good field there. It's played twice a year. One year in 2015, he won both stagings. He has won a Turning Stone Classic in 2023. But the tournament he's most associated with has to be the Moscow League Cup. Back to back, most valuable player, MVP in 2020 and again the following year. If he doesn't qualify this year, normally you'd say he would be an automatic pick. I still think he would have a, a wonderful chance of being selected, but it's not a, a given. But Jason Shaw here very much motoring. Another very well executed break and run out. After losing the opening rack, he's put together a hat trick and he leads by three racks to one. Carl, you know Jason very well indeed. Over the years, you must have seen him play some extraordinary, excellent, inspirational pool. Yeah, definitely. I think you just touched on it. The Moscone Cup is where he seems to bring his A game. Loves that team environment and also the big, big crowd that you get there. The drama, the rivalry, the banter as well. Yeah, I think he's worth an extra point. The way he weighs in at the pre-match press conference always seems to, to find the weak spot on the American team or something that they... I feel they're a little vulnerable over. 
well, I think that might go up a notch even more so this year with the announcement of Fedor Gorst playing for USA. And there's Jason's wife. And greater supporter. They run a very successful pool room in West Haven, Connecticut, which recently held a World Nine Ball Tour ranking event, the Connecticut O. And don't think Shaw can't pot ball after ball after ball. One of his greatest achievements is that he holds the record for the highest run in straight pool. Now there was some dispute as to how many balls the record was. Officially, it is 669. Now that's the meeting, the ultimate meeting of skill and immense concentration to knock that many balls in consecutively. Getting on the three balls gonna cause issues. He's landed a little straight, so he's only really forced to draw the cue ball back now. There you can see what angle he's faced with. Possible three nine combo, but you really want to get straight on that ball. Yeah, he's definitely contemplating that. But he knows he needs to be precise with Whitey. As long as he's got a shot on the ball to the side, that's all you want. Cue ball running forward. I just missed the nine ball. So you may have to slightly jack down on the cue ball. You know, you see him raising his back arm so he can stun the cue ball. Very popular here, Jason Shaw. Big crowd around the table for his previous match. And again, not so many in the grandstand behind the table where he was playing towards there, but flanked on either side by sizable numbers. Yeah, the grandstand here at the venue is a bit of a false indication because this is a roaming style pool tournament. You can be on the floor and just wander where you want. So this venue is probably the biggest event I've seen in the open events, Phil, would you agree? Absolutely, I think the, the venue itself is superb. I've got 26 tables in, you could get 36 without any sweat whatsoever. Terrific facility. Yeah, we could see it not that long ago with table two, the amount of people that was round that table. So they just filter and roam about to whichever match you want. So there's a few tables I've got. I would say massive, massive crowds around, but there's 50, 60 people for sure around some of the tables. People's got to travel. Oh, that's all right, they'd be happy with this. So it's on a little three pack here. Is there any grain of doubt about the nine? Well, after missing the seven in rack two, yes. But this is Jason Shaw. Now, this is the kind of pool we've been waiting to see from him for some time in these major nine ball to world ranking events. Maybe Vietnam is bringing out the best, an eagle eye. He's won so many tournaments, the International Open last year. Also last year, the Super Billiards Expo Players' Championship. And here's some news about someone who's won a load of tournaments. Efren Reyes, he's going to be here, right here with us. 
on Saturday from 5.30. You can see him play an exhibition match against Vietnam's Win Antoine on Table 2. That will be on the Matrim Multisport YouTube channel. So Efren in the house. I said to Jeremy Jones yesterday when we thought he might be coming that Jeremy and I are going to have a photograph with him and I think I want one with you as well with him. That would be a, something to treasure. Someone who was the greatest and someone who thinks he was the greatest. <laughs> and me. <laughs> Leave Jeremy alone, Phil. <laughs> Cue ball's close. Okay, he does have a shot of the blue too. It's long, it's a tester. And it's all about what angle Shaw's face with. Can he go forward with the cue ball just to miss the nine? Then come back out for the red three, which is on the right hand side. It's unusual, Carl, for me to get the first jibe in of the day. Normally you give me a few daggers before uh, I get one in. To be honest, I didn't really see it as a jibe. The fact that you want a picture of me is a miracle. It's a fair point, though, Phil. We don't do enough pictures, do we? Oh, there you see the angle he's facing, so he may have to draw this ball. He yeah, may have fluked this four rails. It'll go close, you know. It will go close, but it's not going to go into Luna's out of his chair. Back at the table. He's been a spectator for a little while. I'll give you all of the scores from the qualification matches that are taking place right now at the end of this rack, but I'll give this one on its own. Billy Thorpe, desperate for Moscow Cup Cup inclusion, is 4 0 up on Anton Raga. This is only rack six call, but already this has the look of being the highest quality match we've seen on table one so far. And when two big names go up against each other, that's not a surprise. Yeah, day three, winner's qualification always drums up some high class matches. Yeah, I think on days one and two, we are laying the table. Then the feast begins on days three and four, and it's the main course over the weekend. Jeff DeLuna badly needed that. It took just one missed pot from Shaw. And DeLuna pulls one back, it's 4-2. Okay, the scores. The World Nine Ball Tour rankings number one, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz is on table 11. He's taking on Tao Lian Han who was a member of the Singaporean team that lost in the final of the, the World Cup last year. Well, Toe has won the first rack. Billy Thorpe, as I say, 4-0 up on Anton Raga. Kuo Po Cheng taking the first rack from Alexa Pachalsh. David Alcady, 4-3 now over Win Antoine. Michael Feliciano, finalist in a couple of big WNT ranking events this year. He's 3-1 up on Trin Van Bin. Torsten Homan and Andre Ionescu, 3-3. Mickey Kraus, 2-1 up on Sanyan Perlovanovic in the Battle of the European Youngsters. Skylar Woodward has taken the opening rack from Oliver Velafuerti. Copen Yee and Gary Wilson, that's an intriguing contest on table two. Copen Yee leads 2-1 and no Kwon Trung. Can he pull off another major upset and claim another Filipino scalp, he leads James Aranas 
Fedor Gorscht is out in front. Who would have thought it's 3 1 up on Masato Yoshioka? Oh, that was a nice shot, it really was. Back against the wall. Had a bit of distance to it. Cue ball wasn't guaranteed. He's landed absolutely perfect. Kian in his previous match even though he prevailed in the end he missed a lot of balls I was about to say this is a significant improvement and then the six goes wide overjudged the spin there had to play it with loads of spin so you have to allow for that Luna was just clawing his way back into this match. Shaw doesn't want to be straight here. Straight is causing all kinds of issues. Well, he's playing a trick shot here. Well, he was looking at playing a trick shot. You can see how straight that is. How do you get back down for the eight ball? Come on, Jason, play the shot you're going to play. It's always nice if it comes off. Just took his medicine, didn't he? Didn't bother even attempting to get down that. Thin now, but I think having missed the sixth ball, the Luna would have thought he's going to lose this rack. So any shot on the eight would have been a bonus. Oh, and the cue ball stops in the nick of time. Another rack, you would think, is going to be. Pulled back by the Filipino. There you go. Good contest, this. Jeffrey DeLuna won the first rack. He lost the next four as Jason Shaw broke and ran in the third, fourth, and fifth. Now, though, at 4 3. Hope springs eternal. Not such good news for another Filipino who was runner up in the European Open in Fulda, Germany in August. Anton Raga, 5 0 down to Billy Thorpe. David Alcady, who was the winner of the European Open, he beat Anton Raga at Hill Hill in a classic final. Well, he's 5-3 th up on Win Antoine. Who will be the first player to put their place in day four tomorrow in the single elimination last 64? So are we going to see that explosive break from De Luna? Is he going to get back on level terms?
well, you wouldn't call that explosive, but it was a break that worked. Certainly looks like it'll go in the pocket past the pink four ball. It'll just go. This needs to travel. It's going to land on the 50 yard line. That means it's too thin to pot now. I mean, it will pot, but it's just, it's just so thin. It's hard to control the cue ball. Very close to the, the pink four there as he played that. It was difficult to see from the overhead view, but the, the arm was very close to the pink four. Ball's close to the scratch. That was a very poorly played shot. He needed to clip the three thin, and he was nowhere near where he should have been. Yeah, I know Shaw's playing with a main pull shaft this tournament. You know, it's a new shaft. And you can practice with new equipment and think, oh, this is great. But there's nothing like being out in a match and being tested. And it's when you've got to play certain shots with a bit of spin. That's when you've got to really believe in your equipment. Is it this too hard? I was talking about his cue ball and his cue power. He was playing for the purple five in the other corner. to the top left now. No, he isn't. He's still cutting it in this corner that he was originally playing for. Oh, this is a good pot. Cue ball needs to stop though. It goes on the rail. And he's going to have to get the cue ball in the centre of the table now. Going to make sure he comes back past the nine ball, centre of the table, I'll leave him a shot of the eight. Thin, yes, but eminently gettable. Tell you what, he didn't want the cue ball to catch the bump of the middle pocket. And look where it stopped. Talk about a, a pressure ball. Tell you what, this shot could be key in the whole contest.
Well, he missed it on the pro side, as they say, but the cue ball not deep enough. Shaw should knock this in. He's such a fine potter. Eagle eye. Yeah, not in without any great hesitation. And so he has regained a two rack cushion. Jason Shaw leading by five racks to three. Now, losers round two. That's completed. We're on to losers round three now. Some really interesting contests there. David Bowler of Singapore on the hill against Wynn Van Hern at 7-5. Lower down, we've got some really big names involved. Ko Ping Chung, the USO champion, 1-0 up on Wynn Doug Day. Marvin Assis from the Philippines, 3-2 up on the Wan Tian Man. Another big name just starting out on table 12, Carlo Biardo. He's taken the opening rack from Pier Francesco Garcia of Italy. And the Jao Grio of Portugal. Useful sort he is. He's 2-2 with Fan Tien Dung. And it's all rosy for Ralph Suka on table six. That's one of the first four racks from American Michael Yednak. Familiar figure on table two. You can see all of the action over there throughout the day, throughout the tournament on the Matru Multisport YouTube channel. Copin Yi breaking off. It was 1 1 with Gary Wilson. Now, though, Co is in command. He's leading 5 1. Wilson's had some really good wins over big name players. But the scalp of Coping Yi would definitely be his best. And right now it looks unlikely. Yeah, cue ball control excellence from uh, Coping Yi. That's where he really excels. That's his strength. Obviously, a fantastic pot. I've got a load of bottle as well. That's not that silly. He's won some big, big events, Phil, hasn't he, in the world of pool? See if you agree with this. I was thinking about this yesterday. When it, Ko Ping Chung, his brother, younger brother, won the US Open, he was delighted and quite rightly so. It was a wonderful achievement for the young man. But, you know, he's a competitor, Ko Ping Yi. Ko Ping Chung, now out of his elder brother's shadow. But Ko Ping Yi... Somewhere inside the competitor's mind will be thinking, yeah, I want to get back at the top of the tree. I want to be the best in the family again. Yeah, obviously, he won the Masters, didn't he? Fantastic major turn to win. 16 of the best show up there year on year. The US Open always holds a special part in a pool player's mind. Let's see what Gary Wilson's got to offer here. It's all wrong. Of course, if you're in winner's qualification, it's not the end of the world if you lose. You then go into loser's qualification later on, so there's still another bite of the cherry. Billy Thorpe flying over Rag at 6 1. He's making Jeremy Jones' his ears stand up on edge at the right time of the year, Phil, isn't it? I'm not commentating with Jeremy, so I can say these things openly and I'll expect a response from you, Carl, because you're not involved directly. What about this? Gorscht, Van Boning, Skylar Woodward, Billy Thorpe, Tyler Steyer. Now that's the highest standard from one to five American team we've had for quite some time. Now I'm not gonna say Steyer and Thorpe are gonna be picked, or one of them might qualify, of course. But if it is those five, I'll tell you what, that's a good lineup. Yeah, I mean, let's say, obviously, I think SVB is pretty much a lock for third spot. He's going to be there, isn't he? He's going to yeah. be picked anyway. No, I, I know that, but I think, let's say, if Shane gets the third spot, mm. OK? So we know the top three. For me, Tyler Steyer's has got to be in. He won the Texas Open, beating a, a stellar field there. You know what you get with him. He works hard, he does the gym, he, you know, 
he just does everything right. Like you want as a professional, so for me, I'd be amazed if Jeremy Jones didn't pick Tyler Steyer, but obviously it's his choice. And then I just feel like there's that one player left as a case for a few people. Billy, like you said, he's played in it a lot, he's won it, he's a character. And I think the last sort of two or three months, I'm not saying he's won tournaments, but he's been going deeper and getting some wins under his belt and showing showing a little bit of form. This is a long way to go in this event, as we know. For, but yeah, I know what you're saying. It would be a, a strong team on paper. I think it would be a strong team on the table. I really do. I'm more intrigued to see how Fedor is going to handle 3,000 fans who probably will be booing him and hissing and cheering. You know, it's like all pantomime sort of stuff, but he's got to handle all that situation yet. Yeah, we don't know how he's going to handle it. Now there's an intriguing shot. 297 and now 29. All over very quickly that rack. A couple of combos and Jason Shaw now has a, a handy lead again. As he did at 4-1. Three in front. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, who will be at the Alexandra Palace representing Europe. He's 3 1 up on Tony Anhan after losing the first rack. As we said, Billy Thorpe 6 1 on Anton Raga. Naoki Oi and Johan Chua starting out on table 15. Alexa Pashalsh, who's 3 1 up on Kuo Po Cheng. David Alcady, another already locked down member of Team Europe for the Moscone. He's 6-4 up on Win Antoine. Michael Feliciano 5-3 over Trin Van Bin. Good battle between Andre Ionescu and Torsten Homan at 4-4. Lee Van Corteza and Pius Labutis 1-1. Mickey Kraus 4-1 up on Sanyan Polovanovic. And Skylar Woodward, well, he's playing some lovely pool here and he's 4-0 up on Oliver Vela Fuerte. Two other notable scores to give you quickly. Fedor Gorscht, everything going according to plan against Masato Yoshioka. He leads 4 1. No Quang Trung, the giant killer against Carlo Biardo. Might be the giant killer against James Aranas. No, leading 5 2. They're all winners' qualification contests. Push out. He was trying to make a bit of a mess up the top end of the table. It's not really done it just because where the six has landed. It's a very easy combination from the pink four. De Luna will weigh up his options. He'll play the shot or pass it back. Give you a fair warning here, Carl. I was asking Jeremy Jones some into rack questions yesterday, so your next one will be coming up after this rack. Actually, I'll give you fair warning on this one because it will give you time to think. It's a topical question. The best match you've ever seen Jason Shaw play. So don't give me the answer until the end of this rack. Look at that peach. Yeah, yeah, that was nicely controlled to the cue ball, wasn't it? The best matches played. No, give me the answer at the end of the rack, that's what I'm saying. I, I'm struggling to think. I didn't think I'd think i struggle to think, but I am. He's played a few to choose from. That's my point. I'm struggling to think, but I don't know why I'm struggling. I think I've kind of got an answer. We look forward to it. Well, you can see the difficulty the Luna's got here because going below the three ball to the left, cue ball would go into the five. So he's trying to go two rails. He's, he's trying to tie the three up. 
thought he'd miss it. He wasn't miss it. He was trying to bank the three over towards the four. You could see the plan, actually. But this could well be rack over. This is a chance for sure to extend the lead. I'm going to give you the answer now, Phil. I don't see the point in waiting. Go on, then. I think it's a match against Coping Yee when he was down heavily. He's, he's actually played Coping Yee two or three times where he's been down 9 1, 10 1. I can't remember the exact match, but I know I think he was 10 1 down to Coping Yee somewhere and he won 11 10. He can get a bee in his bonnet and start a buzz. We saw that at one of the tournaments earlier in the year when he wasn't best pleased with the antics of his opponent's friend who was watching the match. There was a little bit of aggro, words were said, and having been well behind, he suddenly came alive and won the match. Bows are his best friend at the moment. That was a 4 6. Now the, the 4 follows. And 7 3 coming up, surely. Although he is a little thinner on the 5 ball. Actually, much thinner than he wanted to be. A problem that's solvable, though. Yeah, just avoiding the nine. Touch of side widens the angle of the cue wall off that top cushion. The short rail. been lightly raced in this tournament so far Jason Shaw he had a, a walkover in the first round he won his second round match on paper at least comfortably 9-4 now he's just two rucks away from earning the rest of the day off and making it into the last 64 without any great sweat to the US sweating Anton Raga 7-1 down to Billy Thorpe now, Billy buzzing. Johan Schur has won the first two racks against Naoki Kiyoi. Alexis Pachalch 3 2 over Kuo Po Cheng. Still 3 1 for FSR Francisco Sanchez Ruiz against Tolian Han. It's tightening up between David Alcadi and Win Antoine. 6 5 now to the Spaniard. 6 3 for Michael Feliciano over Trin Van Bin. 6 4 for Torsten Homan over Andre Ionescu. It was 4 4 there. Homan's won the last couple. These are all winners' qualification, by the way, I'm giving you the scores off. Mickey Krause, 6 1 up on Sanyan Pelovanovic. Oliver Villafuerte has won his first rack. He's 4 1 down to Skyler Woodward. Coping Yi now 6 1 up on Gary Wilson over on table 2. If you want to see the action there, just a reminder, all of Table 2 can be watched on the Matchroom Multisport YouTube channel. And Masato Yoshioka, who is a regular now in the Japanese World Cup team alongside Naoki Oi, he's pulled a rack back against Fedor Gorscht. Gorscht leads 4-2. race to be the first player into the single elimination last 64 I'll tell you what not inconceivable it could be won by Jason Shaw yeah he's had to play the push here so he's rolled out into a jump shot I think Jeffrey will be tempted to play this you know it's fairly straight if he pots it he's got a good chance of landing on the three ball 
but then I suppose it's not easy to get on the four ball. Decided it's not for him. Again, I don't really see there's anything wrong with his shot choice there, Jeffrey. Accepting or giving back a push out is very much personal choice. Sometimes the correct thing to do is obvious. Most of the time, it's a matter of how you feel. Oh, brilliant. He won the chess battle, did Shaw. He rolled out to there, attempted the Luna. The Luna didn't fancy it. Shaw showed him what he should have done himself. Don't know if he can land on this pink four for the middle. If he can't, he's got to play this with a bit of pace to come back out. Well, he can, that's even better for sure. That is a right bonus. For pool, for pool fans in the UK, around Europe, this will be a very encouraging display. I think it's the best I've seen him play centre stage in a while, although the seven going next to the eight could pose an unwanted problem. Just stopped. Just stopped. Well, Jeffrey DeLuna's head must be spinning. He's not played a bad match. But Jason Shaw is back in the house. Back in the house, back in stroke. Looks confident, and he's arrived on the hill at 8-3. Very nice indeed. Also on the hill, Billy Thorpe, the much-mentioned player during the last hour or so, but with every justification, he's 8-1 up on Anton Raga. What a result that would be if he could apply the finishing touches. Also on the hill, Michael Feliciano. He's 8-3 up on Trin Van Bin. Coping Yee stretching away from Gary Wilson. I think that's pretty much over. 7 1 on table two. And Fedor Gorscht tightening his grip as well. 5 2 up on Masato Yoshioka. Good to see Jason playing like his old self. Yeah, when he missed that ball in the open two racks, I think that just made him bear down that little bit more. Yeah, it was the very easy seven in the second rack. We did play some good stuff over in Atlantic City, the 46 US Open Pool Championship, so clearly feeling good about his game. Well, he had the three consecutive break and run outs in racks three, four and five. What about now he's on the hill? side pocket this three balls covered with the six combination could be made on the six though so if Jason can pop this with a bit of left come back out for the combo which he can one good combination here in position on the three he needs an angle to get back down for the pink four let me quickly say before this rack might be over our next offering on table one features another of the game's great 
heavyweights. Oh, as Jason Shaw misses the combo. Next up, it's Kyle Amarotto against Shane Van Boning. But after that, those two might have to wait a little more. Watch out, cue ball, Phil. Watch out, the cue ball! Wow, what a reprieve for Jason Shaw there. I'm sure Jason Shaw never thought he'd be getting back to the table so soon. Rag has just won another rack, but he's going to need the last seven there as he trails Billy Thorpe 8-2 now. The Vietnamese fans becoming a little excited over on table three because Win Antoine is now on level terms with David Alcady at 6 6. But Shaw just wants to pop these three balls and complete his work for the day. Cuba needs to just travel. It's just got there. You can do something. Yeah? For the most part, that was accomplished. Accurate. A1 from Jason Shaw. Eagle Eye is now soaring again. And he's cut down a very tough opponent there in Jeffrey De Luna made it look easy winning by nine racks to three so he's through winners qualification he's into the last 64 tomorrow where it is single elimination and I can tell you what when the draw is made no one will want to play him they will want to avoid him because when he's on form he can be extremely tough to beat Jason Shaw defeats Jeffrey De Luna by nine racks to three